Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my series on transforming your Microsoft Access backend database into a makeshift database server. Today's video follows part one, obviously, so if you have not watched this yet, go watch it first and then come on back. You'll find a link down below. It's free. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my website. Go watch it and come on back. Okay, I'm going to start today by grabbing the database from the cache locally video because it's going, to, it's going to be very similar to the setup for that. So if you're a gold member, you can go right here and download it. If not, go watch this video and build it because that's what we're going to be using today. All right, so let me download this guy. The zip file has two files in it, a front end and a back end. If you open up the front end, the tables are going to be all linked. But like I mentioned in the last video, they're linked to my uh, drive mappings. So if you look at one of them like this, you can see it's C users, Amicron, desktop, backend. You might need to relink those tables. If you don't know how to do that, of course, I've got a video for it. Go watch this guy. I'll put a link down below. As a review, these are all tables in the back end, right? And what we do is our get customers button, if you look at it, all right, it essentially deletes the data in your local customer temp tee, and then it runs this query, which basically gets all the customers from New York or Florida, whatever you've got selected, and it puts just those guys in customer temp. The reasoning is, is that now all of that work was done Okay, and now you've got customer temp locally, which has just the records you want to run your reports. But your system still had to initially pull down all of the records from the customer table in order to filter through them and figure out which ones it needed. So what we're going to do in this series of videos is bypass that. We're going to actually have the back end database sit there and wait for commands from this database, and then it's going to put the stuff in the customer temp table itself. Okay, then when you look at this, it's got all the data in it, and you, your machine doesn't have to do any of the work. Now, I'm also going to start out by saying this is a very simple proof of concept database. This is just to show you how something like this can work. Okay, and I'm going to do it with one table. Obviously, if you've got multiple tables, if you got a more complex setup, you're going to have to do a lot more work to get this to, to work in your environment. Proof of concept, just showing you how to do it, okay? All right, so for now, let's close the front end and let's go work on our back end. This will be our server, all right, our back end server. And when I do stuff like this, just so I don't get confused, I'm going to make this actually look significantly different, all right? So let's open up the properties for main menu. Let's change the caption to server. Let's make it red. So that it, you know, when I'm, when I'm working in this database, I want it to look different from the other one. All right, let's make the background color red. Uh, let's go with that. All right. We don't need all of this stuff in here. Uh, we don't need hello world. I'm going to make this much bigger because we're going to use the status to display the constant status of what's going on, what's happening. Okay, of course, you leave this alone. Don't ever touch that. Now I'm going to put a little checkbox right here called server running. Okay. And this is so you can manually turn on and off the server's commands. Now you could set that to yes. So that when the database starts up, it just starts running. That's up to you. But while we're building our proof of concept here, this will allow us to turn things on and off. So it's literally just going to be a checkbox. We'll drop it right here and we'll call this running. We'll set the default value to no, so when it so that it doesn't start up automatically with the database. Let's make this background a little darker. Uh, let's go. Yeah, right there. That's good. All right, now we'll make this white. Prettiness is important, folks. Server running. Okay. Next thing we can do is gut it and get rid of the stuff we don't need. We don't need any of this stuff. We don't need the order stuff. Just keep the main menu, that not trusted thing, and these two blank ones. Delete the rest of them. Uh, we don't need these queries. Delete those. We don't need that report. Get rid of that. Everything else is fine. Okay, now the concept is going to be this database is going to take records out of customer table and put them in customer temp. But we're going to move customer temp back to this database and then link to it. 
So this database does the work, fills customer temp, and now the other database, when it looks at customer temp, has just the temporary records, just those five people from Florida, for example. So we're gonna move customer temp back to the server. All right, here it is here, customer temp, click and drag, drop it. All right, here's a copy of customer temp right there. There's some records in there now, that's fine. And now over here in the front end, we're gonna get rid of customer temp. All right, delete it from here. And now we're actually gonna link to that one. All right, so external data, get from database, access, uh, link to it, browse. It's on my desktop. It's in the, where are you? It's right there. Yeah, I know my desktop's getting messy. Hit open, hit okay. Okay, now now I'm leaving this in the video because this might come up. It's, it came up several times at me when I was building my temporary database. Whenever you go into design view in either one of these databases, okay, it may put the databases in a state where they're locked and you won't be able to do certain things, including linking tables and stuff. So if that's the case, we just have to restart both of these databases. Save changes. Sure, see, that was a, it was in a designed state. All right, and that can happen. Even if you do your design changes and then exit the design and go back to like form view, the database might still be in a locked state. Okay, and yes, I know that this question's in your head too. I have both of these databases here on my desktop for development. When you're done, you're gonna move this backend database to your server. That's gonna sit and run on your server machine. All right, just so that's everyone's thinking about that, okay? All right, so I'm gonna open up my front end. We'll leave the backend closed for now and let's link that table. External data, new data from database, access, same steps, link it, browse, desktop, where are you? Back end. Hit OK. There we go. Customer temp. And now we're linked to our customer temp as well. OK. All right. Next step. Let's go back to our back end. Now we need a way to pass commands from this guy to this guy. In other words, the front end, we're going to click this button. When we click this button, it needs to send a command to the server that says, Hey, I want you to run this SQL for me. I want you to take, you know, these customers and put them in the customer temp for me so that it's fixed over here. All right. So the best way to pass data from one database to another database is to put that command in a table. We can make a table. It's got a command or a series of commands in it that both of these databases have access to. And this guy's going to sit here running a loop watching that table. When there's a command in there, it's going to execute it. Okay, then it'll mark it finished, and then this guy will know that that's done. And that's how we're gonna pass commands back and forth. So let's create a command table in the server. Create table design. All right, we got a command ID, a command date time, and this is so it knows what order to run these commands in, right? Don't always rely on the auto number. Look at the date time, okay, command text this will be a long text because this is going to be a complete sql statement and those can get long so we'll make it long text and then command completed will be a yes no value make sure that's defaulted to no and when the server finishes it it'll mark it completed and the front end will know it's completed we'll save this as command t primary key yep sure okay and now once again we got to link this into the other database. So I'm going to close the back end. And again, we'll link that. Probably should have did these at the same time, right? All right. External data, new data source from database access. Go back to the same spot. Get that database from my desktop. From a desktop back end. Hit OK. Give me that command table. Hit OK. All right. So now you're good to go. We can pass commands using this command table. And in the next video, we're going to actually write the function to send commands to the server. So that'll be tomorrow. Tune in, same bad time, same bad channel for part three. So that's going to do it for part two of your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can.
Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. 
and I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full-length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.